Well, hello everybody. I'm from uh, Grants Pass. We were a regular commercial farm milking 520 cows just six years ago. And, uh, the dairy industry changed and so we uh, went down with a lot of the rest of them. So we decided we'd try something different. And uh, we went through the small farms program and started to diversify. And one of the things we decided was farm direct marketing. And then along with to promote our marketing, or our, our farm stand, we decided to get into the agritainment. And we started with the corn maize and uh, pumpkin patch. This is our, our second year. The first year was uh, without the tent. <laughs> <laughs> and we just had a, a couple of acres of sweet corn, and it was sold under the honor system. We just filled the stand up, and people came and made their own change in a coffee can. And that drove more attention than the good corn did. All the neighbors were bringing their friends from California over and they were taking pictures. They couldn't, <laughs> couldn't fathom that that would work. And so that's just a, a, our first fall, our second year, we did some pumpkins and that was when we started the uh, corn maize and pumpkin patch. Our um, third year, we expanded and actually the first two years, we also took sweet corn into the um, local growers market. And we were growing a few other vegetables. Our marketing plan was if we're getting them to come out and buy a dollar's worth of corn, we'll sell them a, another dollar's worth of tomatoes. And, and that seemed to work. So we grew from there. And um, when we got into the corn maize and the pumpkin, we thought, well, we need to be sure we sell at least a truckload. So we did. We found a, a local guy that was headed to Arizona. And uh, that was our first semi-load of pumpkins that we sold. And there's, there's more money in uh, jack-o'-lanterns than there is in food. So we, were, we were learning. Um, school tours, that was a great way once we started Corn Maze, was uh, we offered it to the schools. And that got the word out that we were there. And so if the little kids came, then they, the big brothers and sisters wanted to come too. So that worked well. And, and a lot of it was just trying to market it. We, we weren't marketers, and so that's how we went. And then... Um, they used to have a balloon festival down there, and then we also, the balloons, because we had some of the larger fields around, they'd land in our fields a lot. So we thought, well, that ought to be a good draw. We'll get the balloon to come out. And so he did. He came out for free, where normally he'd charge a lot of money. And one evening, he gave balloon rides. And that was quite popular. And, and so that was, and then he did the night glow thing. So that helped get us a little more notoriety. So then in 2010, and we, we don't have pictures to show how small it was, but you couldn't, you know, we were parking everybody in the, in the, on the farm in the parking lot. And so, but it was growing. So the next year, uh, the biggest problem we've had is parking. And so we were parking them across the road, and then we had to shuttle them up to the farm to get the, the money out of their pocket and send them to the corn maze and like that. <laughs> and... We had two or three tractors with hay rides running them up back and forth, but we couldn't keep up. And you could see the, the people walking along the road. And that became very nervous because I was sure somebody was going to get hit. Um, and then our farm stand, we actually went from the tent. We put a little metal shed up. And it was just one of those $800 carports that you see that by the time we got done with what all we wanted cost 27 <laughs> But uh, we had grown to this extent, um, and then uh, in 2011, we've grown quite a bit more. We, to draw more people, we, we had concessions, and face painting was popular. I never even thought of face painting. But at one of the ones, we had a birthday party. We tried to do anything, anything for a buck. That's kind of our motto. <laughs> well, the one gal came and uh, was a, an aunt of the the daughter that was having a birthday party, or the, the niece. And so she was painting faces, and she came over to me, and she said, you know, how about if I set up a tent and, and do face painting? I'll give you a percentage. I thought, oh, okay, sounds good. Well, she did really well. And so we learned that uh, we need other people, other things to go on. We get the local fire department to come out and be there, just trying to be tours. I'm trying to convince them to be my safety station. <laughs> So, um, 
And then we worked with uh, the local FFA. We let them sell food. We didn't charge them anything, trying to get a little promotion out of that. And then down the road from us is Wildlife Images. Well, as we'd started the farm stand, we found out that a lot of our customers were going to Wildlife Images, and they just happened to stop at our place. So we kind of tried to partner up with them and promote them, and they promote us. And they had gotten this trolley, and so they became our shuttle from the parking lot up to the farm stand or to where the corn maze started. And so we got the tractors off the road because that was another accident looking for a place to happen. So that worked well. They did that for two years. And then we would just provide them and all their volunteers with a free night at the, the corn maze and pumpkin patch. Uh, and then we also tied up with the Evergreen Bank, who has the Bear Hotel in town. They do a lot of tourism and stuff. And so we went to them. And um, this year, their big thing was Bigfoot. And so they brought Bigfoot out for one day. And, and with them came Cajo Radio Station. And so they had a live remote. Um, just trying to partner up that cut our expense down on the on the radio advertising quite a bit then we added a zip line and, and most everything we did we did low budget our first corn maze was just a little three quarter acre and I cut it in by hand after the corn was tall and learned that a lawnmower early in the season is much easier <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the corn maze grew to four acres and this year in 2012 it was eight acres large well, we needed something else. We try to do something new every year so people keep coming back. So we added uh, a zip line. And this year, well, in the spring is when we started the zip line. And you'd have laughed if you'd seen what we had for a platform because we didn't know if it would really work or not. So we put a pole up and a, and a cable and uh, bought some harnesses and, and precariously perched some hay bales and, and, and floats and stuff up and got people up off the ground and down the hill. But it was popular, the waiting line, and so we built the tower, and we built the tower big enough so that if it really went over big, we could add a second zip line, which is what we did do in 2012. This is just a, an aerial shot of what we did in 2012. We moved all of our stuff down to the field, the uh, tickets and vendors and everybody in the field, and we parked the cars there, so they just walk. Uh, we have one free hay ride that we allow people to use if they want to. The... But a lot of people liked that a lot better. We were, we were treating them like the milk cows and running them through the different chutes. And it worked, but they weren't as happy with it. Um, one thing we found, this was this year, there was a group came and they, they wanted to know if we could pile some hay bales up in front of the corn maze for them. And, and so I asked them why, and they said, well, we've been coming here every year and doing our family portraits. And so we thought, wow, that's pretty cool. And so they, basically they were looking for a pile of hay bales, and we had some hay bales piled for a screen around the air compressor for our air cannon. And they thought, well, how about if we just sat on that? And, well, I could, I could see the kids falling over and probably breaking their neck or something. So I said, no, how about if we just load you on a horse wagon? Well, you have that, and then you can have a ride for free afterwards. And so they were really happy with that. But that's, uh, that's the kind of people we're trying to attract, and that's what we're getting is everybody's coming out here for the farm experience every year. And then there's a lot of people that, in our area, there's a lot of retired people, and they're inviting their kids to come up in October. This is, this is our air cannon. We built that. It shoots pumpkins. Um, we've shot cars and hay bales and stuff. This year, the local scrapyards donated a bread van. The vehicle in front was a perfectly good bread van. And, and then they, they also had a, good, a school bus, and it was in perfect shape there wasn't anything wrong with it so that's what pumpkins do to it <laughs> and then uh, they can also launch pumpkins clear over the trees if they want to shoot for distance and that's that's about 1500 feet so it gives them a good experience um, an old tractor that we still use every day but people wanted to see it so we put it down there and people take photo opportunities um, we have a guy that had a lot of old equipment he was just bringing it by and so finally we actually started painting for him to bring his stuff over. So we rent some old bu uh, buggies and we had a covered wagon and, and different things. Um, photo boards, those are just when I took a piece of plywood and cut the little neck holes out, and painted it green and my wife staples on the clothes, goes to goodwill. Those are popular. People see that and they just run to them. It's just, it's amazing. 
Uh, that's just a shot of our zip line tower. Um, this is from the top of the hill down to where the corn maze was, to give you an idea how we had it laid out. Um, we partnered up, a guy wanted to do the horse drawn wagon rides, and so um, he was giving us a percent, but he wasn't making enough money, and he was a good draw, so he, we just let him keep all the money, and we just hope people come just to do that. Um, kids, we just put some hay bales out, and I mean, it, they have more fun with that. My little nephew made my wife go over and watch him for two or three hours to run up and down these hay bales and stuff, so it works good. Um, this year, for uh, publicity and trying to get notoriety, we cert uh, got search and rescue to volunteer to uh, be in the corn maze, partly to prevent damage and to help people out. And so we, this year, our motto was that we double the size of the corn maze, and so we have search and rescue in there to help you get out. <laughs> and they enjoyed it. And then we we got a little bit of trouble. We'd have volunteers; people just wanted to help us. I mean, oh, wow, that's great. And that's how we started when it was small, because we were a little low budget. Well, the Bureau of Labor and Industries came along and said, well, you, you can't have volunteers. So, but we can donate to search and rescue. And they can come out because they come with their own insurance and stuff. And so that's kind of how we're getting around it. Um, we, get, we get some relatively cheap labor. Um, other things to promote ourselves is we go to local parades and stuff, and we were just waiting in line to go to the parade and these roller derby, derby girls were just thrilled to death with the cannon and they wanted to take pictures and we had lots of people that wanted that. So we're learning, we go to different parades and, and people just like to be around uh, something. And so that's, um, we are still a working farm. This is uh, 200 acres that we picked up this year that we're actually farming commercially. And then this is kind of the overview of the farm where the greener fields in a triangle and then we go clear over the hill and one of the things we do in we got into garlic two years ago this is our second year which is kind of fun and so we we got a helicopter to come in and, and spray it and somehow we want to work that into the agritourism thing where we can get people walking around the farm and say this is going to go on because people in the rogue valley have never seen this type of thing go on and that's about the extent of what we do. Yes? Do you get an event liability policy, or do you have a year-round policy? Uh, last two years, it's been year-round. The, the carrier insured them. But they told us that after this year, the zip line wouldn't come under that. So <laughs> we're not real sure what's going to happen there. Before, we had to get event policies. And the first one we looked at was expensive. And, and luckily, we found another carrier that did it pretty cheap. Okay. Thank you.